Hello students, this is your professor, Dr. Mink, and welcome to the second lecture on Chapter 6. We're going to start off with the content from Section 6.3. We will cover functions. Functions are very similar to procedures, except they return a value, which means they uh, are typically on the right-hand side of an assignment statement, and they're the value they return is assigned to a variable of the same type as the return. Let's take a closer look. When we declare a function, we use the keyword function. And it also includes the as data type, which states the data type of the value to be returned. So that value is uh, returned using uh, a return expression, which is typically the last statement in the body of the function. Here we're dissecting a function call to the function sum. The function sum has two by value parameters. And in this particular case, we're passing double value one and double value two, which we'll assume are uh, declared variables, which are declared as doubles. And this function most likely returns a double. We don't have its declaration in front of us, but you would assume it does. And the return value is the sum double number one, double num one plus double num two. It's not a very complex function, okay? So in this function call, the return value, which is a sum of double num1 and double num2, is assigned to double total. Uh, I'm going to post a video for tutorial 6-5 that demonstrates the use of a function. It would be a good time for you to pause this, uh, or you could wait one or two more slides till we end this section and uh, pause this audio lecture and take a look at that tutorial running. Here we have an example of a function that returns a non-numeric value. You can return strings, boolean, any data type. So we have both the function call on the right-hand side of an assignment statement, and we have the function definition. The function definition uh, for full name has two by value arguments passed over two by value parameters which are strings and what this function does is it concatenates those two strings and it adds a space between the two of them so you're passing john and martin as the two arguments to full name and it will concatenate those add those together with a space in the middle. And so it has a local variable declared within the body of the function, that variable's string name, and then string name equals string first, and which concatenates two strings, and simple space, string one space, and string last, and that it will return string name. That entire return will replace the function call in the assignment statement at the top of the box, the rectangular box. Next up is the content from section 6.4, where we will learn more about debugging. Uh, we'll learn how to step into over and out of procedures and functions in debugging mode. Next, I want to introduce the step into command. Um, you can single step through a procedure in this mode. And so you select debug from the menu bar and then select step into from the debug menu. And you click the step into button. If the toolbar is visible, it's not always visible. Step into steps one 
line of code at a time into the procedure or function. And it shows you the local variables. I'm going to post a video of tutorial 6-6 .6 running, and you'll be able to see this. So you've got step into, step over, or step out of. And we'll cover each of those in uh, a separate slide. Let's take a look. Uh, I, I think you should, before you go any further, I think you should pause this and look at the tutorial 6-6 uh, video demonstration. So you get an idea of step into, and then we'll cover step over and step out of. Once you've debugged and proven a specific procedure or function, you can use the step over command in the debugger to step over the um, procedure. You don't have to step into it and then uh, single step through it. You can step over it. The third, which we're going to cover next, is step out of. Once you're into, you step into a procedure or function, you can step out of it. So let's take a look at tutorial 6-7. I suggest that you pause this presentation. Boy, you're going back and forth, back and forth. But I guess um, that's not too difficult. So really, pause this, this audio lecture right now and go watch tutorial 6-7, which I've posted in the timeline, and then come back and we'll cover the last um, step command in the debugger. Let's say you've stepped into a procedure or a function, and you decide after stepping into one or more lines of code that um, everything is okay and you want to step out of. You don't want to continue to single step through that you would then choose or click on the step out button to step out of that procedure. In other words, end the procedure, or execute all the code to the end and go back to um, where it was called. Uh, tutorial 6-8, which is posted in the timeline session, demonstrates the use of the step out debugging command. I've assigned completion of the tutorial, the Bagel House tutorial in this week's timeline session. And to finish up this audio lecture, I'm going to walk you through um, how to design this program and uh, many of the forms and controls that you'll see or that you'll have to build in code. So let's take a closer look. So as an overview, <clears throat> the owner of a bagel house, uh, Brandy's Bagel House, has requested that you write an application that the employees can use uh, to record an order as it's called in. So uh, you have two types of bagels, uh, white and whole wheat bagels, for them to choose from. And then there is a variety of five different toppings that can be placed on the bagels. Cream cheese, butter, blueberry jam, raspberry jam, peach jelly. No thanks. I like cream cheese. That's about it. Um, and there are three types of coffee, regular cappuccino and, cap cappuccino and cafe, cafe LA. Um, and the application will display the total of the order, including 6% sales tax. Here we have the form and all of the controls that you'll need to add to the form. And you even have the control names. You've got um, uh, radio buttons for the type of bagel, uh, white or whole wheat. You've got check boxes for the toppings. And uh, you have radio buttons for the coffee. And then you've got your subtotal tax and total labels. You have three buttons, button calculate, button reset, and button exit. You're going to have to write procedures for the three button click event handlers. 
the calculate, exit, and reset button uh, click event handlers. Let's go over them one at a time. Uh, the click event handler for the calculate button is um, going to calculate and display the total of an order. It will call four different functions. Bagel cost, coffee cost, topping cost, and calc tax. Okay. Each one of those functions will return, obviously, the cost of the bagel, the cost of the coffee, the topping cost, and the calculated tax. Obviously, the button or the exit button ends the application. That's very simple. And the reset button um, resets the controls on the form to their initial values and calls the following procedures. Uh, reset bagels, reset toppings, reset coffee, and reset price. Here we have some pseudocode, not actual code, but pseudocode for the um, calculate buttons click event handler. And remember, calculates the total of an order and displays its price. Okay, so subtotal equals the return from the function bagel cost plus the return from the function total cost plus the return from the function coffee cost. Okay, that gets you your subtotal. And then tax is um, assigned the return from the call to calc tax, the calc tax, fun ta calc tax function. And we're passing subtotal as an argument to calc tax. And then our total, obviously, is our subtotal, which is calculated above, plus the tax. And then we set the label text properties of um, subtotal, tax, and total. The procedure for the click event handler resets all the radio buttons, check boxes, and labels. And you're going to uh, code four procedures, reset bagels, reset toppings, reset coffee, and reset price. Um, given what we've learned so far, this should be fairly simple. No, no returns. You're just resetting um, all of those radio buttons, check boxes, and labels, etc., to the default or initial setting. Next, we'll discuss the functions that you will code. Calc bagel cost will return the price of the bagel. Um, so you're going to need the bagel cost declared as a variable to receive the call of the bagel or the return of the bagel cost. Calc topping costs will return the total price of the selected toppings. And calc coffee cost will return the price of the coffee that's selected and obviously calc tax accepts the amount of a sale as an argument and returns the amount of sale tax on that amount. The tax rate is stored in a class level constant called decimal tax rate. This is pretty common whenever you have uh, a tax rate. You want, um, you want that as a class level constant. So if the tax rate changes, which does happen in states, it's happening in our state right now. As a result of some legislation, the sales tax is going to be decreased, which is unheard of. It's always increasing. But anyway, you just go in and you change that one uh, class level constant, and the program will then, from that point on, calculate the new tax rate. Some more pseudocode for the calc bag bagel cost function. You have two options, either a white or a whole wheat bagel, and the, um, the pseudocode is right here. You know, if white is selected, then the cost of the bagel equals 1.25. You'd obviously need a variable for cost of bagel and uh, a local variable that will be returned at the end. So you've got an if-else statement that assigns the appropriate or the, the 
associated cost of the bagel, depending upon whether or not they selected white or whole wheat. Now remember, toppings are handled with check boxes, and that's a little different than the radio buttons, whether it's a um, white or a whole wheat bagel. Um, you can have multiple toppings. Ooh, I can't imagine butter and cream cheese, but anyway, and blueberry. <laughs> but yes, you can. You can have one or more or all of them. So in this particular case, the cost of the topping has to be declared as zero because we're going to add each topping selected to it. So you want to declare the cost of the topping in a variable and you want to initialize it to zero. So then if cream cheese is added, it adds, it takes the cost of the topping and adds 50 cents. If butter is selected, it adds 25 cents. If blueberry is selected, so each of these adds an incremental cost to the, um, the cost of the topping. And then we'll um, return the cost of the topping. Coffee selection is handled with the radio button. So um, if no coffee is selected, the cost of the coffee is assigned the value of zero. Um, else if it's regular, $1.25, $1.25, else if it's cappuccino. Notice these are mutually exclusive because these are radio buttons. So it's, it's, it's not incremental. You're not adding the value of those selected um, to, uh, together. It's, you can't select two different, two different types of coffee. You can only select one because it's a radio button. Thus, you need else ifs, not if and if strung together. And ultimately, it returns the cost of the coffee. So the calc tax function um, is the only function that uh, accepts an argument, and that's um, the amount uh, uh, parameter variable will take the subtotal, and then the tax rate um, is used. Remember, the tax rate is stored in a class level constant. So it simply returns the amount of sales tax, which is the subtotal times the tax rate. And that's returned um, and stored in a variable in the procedure that calls it. So here is um, a description of all the procedures. Reset bagels, resets the bagel, radio buttons, uh, reset toppings, resets the topping checkboxes, all to unchecked. Reset coffee, uh, resets the coffee radio buttons to their initial values, and reset price sets the text property of um, label subtotal dot label tax. I'm sorry, label subtotal, label tax, and label total to string dot empty. The default uh, radio button for uh, bagels is white. That would not be the default for me. I prefer wheat bagels, but I digress. Anyway, um, reset bagels resets the bagel radio button to the default or initial values, which is uh, rad white selected and rad wheat deselected. The reset toppings procedure unchecks all of the topping checkboxes. So, you know, check cream cheese, check butter, check blueberry, check raspberry, and check peach all get assigned the value unchecked. And once again, because the coffee selection is um, chosen using radio buttons, the reset coffee procedure uh, resets the coffee radio button to so their initial value, which is the default selected is uh, regular coffee. Um, and all the other radio buttons are deselected. 
And last but not least, you'll have to code the reset price procedure, and that copies the empty string to label subtotal, label tax, and label total. This is the uh, last slide for part two of chapter six, which means it's also the last slide for chapter six. Uh, I am assigning tutorial 6-9 for you to build and submit this week. So um, obviously, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the various methods you could. Uh, ideally, you should post questions in the general questions and answer forum so everybody can see your questions and my answers. But you can also email me or mail me questions through the web study mail function. Thanks for watching and listening to this audio lecture. Um, have a great day. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have questions of anything we've covered in this class.